Welcome to the Creative Geek, a place for you who not only consume, but also create geek culture, in one form or another. I'm John, and I just made a smoke machine out of a hair blower to use to simulate fires in my spaceship Simpit build. And while you might not want to make a smoke machine, a lot of these techniques are actually useful for a lot of other devices as well. So tag along, and hopefully I can teach you something new. So how does a glycerine smoke machine actually work? What happens is uh, it's heated, but it's also atomized. Because the air is flowing over the rags with the glycerin on them, that brings with it a little, little bit of, of the material. And that is the material that gets heated and turns into smoke. But we need to be serious for a while. I trust you guys, I know I have a smart audience, but just to be sure, don't try this at home. This is for entertainment, it's not meant to be a how-to video. And this can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And to be honest, it's a bit dangerous even if you know what you're doing. It is high powered, and even if the wire is unconnected, there might be condensators or something like that in there. And those may hold current even when it's unplugged. So if you don't know what you're doing, just don't. This machine is not meant to be pushing stripes of cloth into and heating up. This one nearly caught fire. Every time I switch this machine on, I'm keeping a close eye on it to make sure it doesn't catch fire. And I have a fire extinguisher nearby, just in case. Wouldn't it be easier to just put a fog machine there? Yes. Yes, it would. But I like to try things. And it wouldn't be as fun. <laughs> I started by trying to figure out the wiring of the fan, but soon realized I'm making it unnecessarily complicated for myself. As uh, the on-off switch was broken anyway, I just made sure it was on and then proceeded to install a relay switch directly on the wire. The blue is ground and should be kept as is, so it's the brown one we need to cut and install the switch. But if you don't know this, you shouldn't be doing this either. But this part you might have use for, because this can be used also with lower power, which is not as dangerous. Here's COM, that's where I plug the wire that's coming from this one. And then there's NO, which means normally open, and NC, which means normally closed. And I'm gonna plug that one into normally open, so that this switch is always off, until I switch it on. Here is the other way around, it's on, until I switch it off. And this is important, if I plug this in, this goes hot, and I might hurt myself. So I want to have this completely safe and locked in before I'm doing anything with it. I plan to plug it in like this, and lock these in place. And lock this one to the bottom, and then I can connect an Arduino from here, drawing the wires out. And then I only have low power out. And here's the test of the system. So this Arduino is just to give him power. There's no programming right now. Black wire goes to ground, red wire goes to 5 volts. And this yellow one is a signal wire. So if I plug this into ground, nothing should happen. 
But if I plug this into 5 volt, this switch should change. And the fan turns on. Now, I just need to add the smoking things again. And then I program an Arduino to switch this and connect this to a pin, which I can switch in the programming instead. Everything works! Time for programming. As I'm already making one module that needs external power, let's make another one at the same time. So I'm gonna make a warning light. And basically it works the same way. I need an external power that needs to be switched by the Arduino. For now I'm gonna plug them both into this shield called the Tinker Kit. It's a passive shield, so it's basically just leading wires out into these connectors, so that it is easier to connect things. And it plugs on top of an Arduino Uno, like this. And this gives me six input channels and six output channels. And each of these has three wires. It's power, ground, and then a signal wire. And the signal of the inputs are connected to the analog ports of the Arduino. And the signal of the outputs are connected to the pulse wheel modulation ports of the Arduino. That way I get access to all ports that can be used as both analog and digital, but nothing else. So if I want to use the rest of the ports I still need to plug things into this, but for this first try it's a good way of not having to solder anything. As always, this is a little bit of a simplification, but there's basically two ways of connecting a high power device to an Arduino, a MOSFET or a relay. The relay is a mechanical switch controlled by the low power from the Arduino. So here the signal goes in and a mechanical flip turns over when it turns on or off depending on how you wire it here. While the MOSFET is a circuit. So here you plug in the high power and here you plug in the signal. And this one processes the signal and switches the high power. There are reasons for running both of these ones. Since this is a form of circuit it can switch very fast. So if you want to be able to for example switch a light on and off or to make a faded light through pulse wave modulation, then this is what you need. But this circuit is connected directly to the Arduino, so if something goes wrong, you can fry the whole thing. This one on the other hand, since it's mechanical, it takes a bit more time and you can't really do pulse wave modulation and those kind of things. But it is a mechanical switch and it's not connected, so the high power is not directly connected to the low power. Since this hairdryer is connected to the power socket of the house, which is high power, I'm using a relay, partly to save my circuits in case something goes wrong, but also to saving myself from high power in case I do something stupid. So this thing is in this box and everything is in there, so that there's no risk of me putting my finger there by mistake. On the other hand, when I'm making my warning signal, this is 12 volts. That's too much for the Arduino to handle. But it's really not the dangerous amount of power. And theoretically, I might want to use pulse with modulation or something like that. Probably not. So, this one, MOSFET. This one, relay. I want to get the switch out of the way. So, I'm taking this apart. Because down here, there's quite a lot of space. So I plan to put this in the bottom, plug it in, connect this back on, and then it's basically disappeared. As you already know from earlier videos, I made a main controller, and now I'm making a wire for it. These are the connectors I'm using in that device. The Tinker Kit actually has a place to connect I2C, so I'm gonna use that. I don't have these specific connectors available, but these ones should do the trick. They fit in place, but they don't lock in, so as long as I make sure that they don't fall off, it's gonna work. 
as I think you know if you've seen any of this before, there's four wires for an S squared C. So there's a ground, five volt, clock, and data. Let's just make sure they end up in the right place. One thing to note if you're using the same system as me. If you're using this i squared c connector, that is the same ports as input 4 and input 5. So make sure to not connect anything to those two. In our case, I'm gonna plug things into input 0 and input 1. And finally, here's the whole system working. Alright, let's try to mount this thing. It's gonna go here, in the roof. So, the new controller is working, both the fan that works as a smoke machine and the warning lights. And all the programming on that is done. But there's a few more things I need to do. First, I need to read the right values from the game in Node-RED and take those values into my main controller and send them out to this controller. So that's the thing that's actually gonna switch this on and off. And this is a minor thing, it's basically the same thing as I've done before, just with other values. But then there's one more thing. I need to try and balance the smoke machine. I have no idea how long it needs to be on for. And I have no idea how long a maximum amount of on is. Because I need to make sure that it doesn't catch on fire and I need to make sure there's not too much smoke. So that's just gonna be a bit of fiddling around until I find a value that's good for me. And I already prepared this in the programming so there's just two values that I need to put in there. And then it should work. Famous last words. Everything is wired up, so behind here I have the main controller and there's a wire going from there, out here and here's the controller for the new devices so there's no cable management or anything like that but this wire goes up to the alarm there and this other one goes to the smoke machine the only thing I need to do with the warning light is cable management, everything works for the smoke machine, there's a couple of things left, mainly where to place it. I have two suggestions. One is under this seat, the secondary seat, so that it blows out here and fills from down and then hopefully moves up here so that it comes up over the screen. The other way is to put it in the corner here where I have a small box and then it will leak out of the sides. So I will try both and I will try for how long I need to have it on to make it fill the compartment. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> <coughs> that worked great but let's try that other position as well in the corner so I can see if uh, that works even better smoke detectors in the house switched off I have a timer ready to see how long it actually takes I have a couple of cameras to capture it from a couple of different directions and now I'm just switching it on manually After 10 seconds there's really a lot of smoke, after 20 seconds it's completely full and after 30 seconds it pours out more than it comes in so no reason to have more than about 20 seconds of, of firepower. <coughs> and now the whole room is smoky. <laughs> Check this out, there's this awesome fog in the room. This is powered basically on the same thing as a fog use and maybe it's better to buy a fog use if you don't know exactly what you're doing because there are versions of glycerin that might be harmful to you so 
make sure you're using the right one or go buy fog use which is a bit more expensive but still it's not that expensive and also this is sticky and if you use it a lot you're gonna get this sticky surface and stuff and you don't want that so maybe this is not the best version to use in any case another solution would be to use dry ice and then you can make a server or something that tips the dry ice into warm water and have a small bucket of warm water. And that way the only thing you get is water and carbon dioxide. And that also disappears faster, which is actually a better effect. If it wouldn't have been because I wanted to try this, that's the solution I would go for. I think that's the version you should use if you actually want this machine to be on all the time while gaming. This device will be only be on when I need the effect or want to try something or show it to someone. Otherwise I'm gonna play without it. And just to be super clear, don't do this. This is a stupid idea. Uh, the reason I'm doing it is so that you don't have to. I want to do it to see if it's possible. And it's possible. But if you would like to actually have one of these machines in your sim pit or your build of some kind, I would suggest go buy a smoke machine. They are actually not that expensive. And if you're comfortable using relays, you can use a relay and connect it to the button that switches it on. If you're not as comfortable with high power, then avoid that. But your machine probably comes with a remote control, and a remote control is low powered. So you could wire the remote control in instead, and that way you're not never connected directly to the high power, and thereby um, not risking hurting yourself. Now, let's try this on an unsuspecting victim, in this case my wife. There are more reaction videos coming on the channel, and I will try to up this even more in the future. I already got an even stupider ID that I'm working on, so consider subscribing and liking the video. Programming and other documentation is linked in the description, so check that out and consider joining the Discord as well for even more access. Whoa! Oh, that's they're, they're pulling us out of... They're pulling us out of hyperspace. Oh, no, 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 no. Red lights on. Red lights on. Shit, 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 where are they, are they firing? Uh, I can't see them. Uh, are they, are they behind us? They're behind us. Oh no, we're gonna uh, die. Firing at us. Why? It's warm. Warm. Oh, it's really warm. Okay, should it be this warm? Yeah. Ah! No! <laughs> Did you know I was building it? I, I, knew, I knew you had planned to build it. I knew this was one, <laughs> something that you wanted. I was trying to keep it quiet for as long as possible.